Hi everybody, this is Dave Klein for Raptor Adventures. We are actually starting at the end of the adventure. On this adventure, I spent about four hours out on Barnegat Bay in the kayak, blowfishing. Caught a whole bunch of other different kind of fish too. The ones I was after was the blowfish. I didn't get greedy. I think I took about 16 blowfish. That's enough for several meals. And it was a great time. So let's take you out there and do some fishing. For me, and I know for many of you, there's something magical about going over those last couple of bridges before you get to the bay. That means that the fishing is not far off, so let's get right to it. Yes, and I, I think I got the first fish on. Feels like a blowfish, let's see. First one of the season. Yes, awesome. Happy about that. That means that I've got some fish hanging around here. Get the hook out of him. See if he, what he looks like. He's a little puffer fish. Kind of amazing fish. They are so good. This is kind of a smaller one, but so you take from here back is a fillet. My grandfather taught me how to do this. There's a great fork technique. And that's all meat here. It's like, I don't know, like a giant lobster tail or a giant squid tail or something like that. All right, first fish of the 2022 season in Burning It Bay. Thank you, little feller. Okay, tap, tap. They kind of hit like sunfish. I feel like I have another one on. This one feels a little bit bigger. Yes, yes. Come here, Mr. Blowfish. Woohoo! Awesome. Okay, so they're eating clams right now is what they're eating. Clams, clams for bait. Guy. You're gonna blow up. That's why they call them puffer fish. These are northern puffer fish. They're not poisonous. Don't eat the other puffer fish. They're pretty poisonous. Look at the beautiful green eyes. <laughs> look at look at the guy. He's like, hey, hey, what's going on? <laughs> I love this. This just reminds me so much of fishing with my grandfather. This guy's a little small yet, but aren't they amazing? Okay, so sometimes they strip you off and you, I mean, honestly, you don't even know they're hitting you, the little thieves. So I'm using an assortment of stuff today. I'm using clams here, clams, which I'll cut apart. And I'm using some squid, which is now all over me. Look at that squid juice going on me. And uh, they like both. If you use squid though, sometimes you could get into like a a dusky sand shark, or whatever they're called, dogfish. So I'm going to hook up with both and see what happens here. A little bit of squid and put a teeny little bit of clam. See, you don't need much. And you really don't need the official rig. This is called a blowfish rig right here, what I'm using. So a place to attach a little anchor. I'm only using like an ounce today. Uh, and uh, double hook, a high and a low hook. My grandfather just used to use a one ounce sinker and one hook. Caught a lot of blowfish that way. There's a little bit of a wind blowing today. And uh, so I'm anchored and it looks like it's, uh, the wind is blowing towards shore from like the south, maybe the southwest, south, southwest. Uh -huh. This way again, I don't know if you can see it. The Barnegat Lighthouse is there, and I'm at the BI, the Barnegat Inlet buoy. So the chop makes it a little hard to feel the, the light hits of the blowfish, but there's one on again. I think you hit on a squid strip.
And yes, oh, he's a nice one. Look at him. Oh, all right, he's sweet. This one here, this is what they call chicken of the sea right here, my friends. This is, this is, this is sweet. Sorry, buddy, you're gonna be supper tonight. You are exactly why I came here today. Look at you. Look at this guy. Beautiful fish. He hit on a squid strip. Beautiful green eyes, as you can see. They've got some serious teeth right here. If you look, let me gently lift that up. See the teeth he's got on there, like beak teeth. Almost like a, uh, like some kind of a squid have beaks like that. You don't want to mess around with that. You don't want to get your finger inside of that. But it's also why you don't jerk up on the hook because they're mostly bone and teeth and cartilage right there. So you gently lift when you feel them tap. Okay, thank you, buddy. Ooh, you're gonna be so tasty. Okay, so after a while, things quieted down with the natural bait, the clams and the squid. So I switched to a product here called Fish Bites. Some of this last year and I see a lot of guys using it and switch to fish bites and immediately the bite picked up again amazing let's just drop this overboard and see what happens And sure enough, boom, just like that, we're bringing one up on fish bites. Look at this. <laughs> you know, I would say the ratio has been better on fish bites than actually live bait, guys. So, you know, or girls who's ever watching, look at those fish bites. Just cut them into little strips. I'll show you the package later on, but man, they're hitting these things. I mean, just because you wouldn't believe it if you didn't see it, I did not use any small little fish like that for bait. That guy jumped on my hooks. So I've had him and blowfish and little baby sea bass so far. Keeping the blowfish, everything else goes back. But really beautiful out here. Gorgeous. Kind of, I also get to see like a boat parade out here. There's so many different kind of boats. Or I get bang. Okay, so I just hauled one of these guys in. This is another guy that's exceptionally good at bait stealing. This is a juvenile sea bass. Eventually, as they get older, they'll move out of the bay and they'll go out to structure out in the ocean floor. Uh, they're gorgeous fish. As they get older, they get more blue in through here. And, uh, you know. Uh, so he took off through the scupper hole. <laughs> in case you didn't ever know it in the kayak, I'll show you. Right here, there's a scupper hole. See it? And the fish can get off and, and go right down through there. I wanted to show you something else while we're here. Long shot thing. I just happen to have some extra leftover bait from a surf fishing trip I was on. A little while ago, I had it in the freezer. I'm not sure my wife knew I had it in the freezer. So here you go, this is a bait fish. Just for fun, to pass the time while I was out here working on the blowfish. I rigged one of these up and threw it out. Only thing is, I was lazy. I put it on a blowfish rig. That's kind of ridiculous, because the hooks are so small. And I had it on this rod right here. And next thing you know, zing, off it went. And I went to set the hook. Of course, I pulled it right out because there's no decent hook there. So I changed hooks over. I, I have no idea what that was, but it was a, definitely a predator. Could have been a bluefish. Could have been, I don't know, what else, guys? Could have been a striper. Could have been a, what we call a, uh, a dogfish, maybe? I don't know. But I'm keeping this last one for later on as the night goes on here. I'll hook it up again. Anyway, here we go, back to the blowfish. Oh, this one hit hard, wow. He's gotta be even bigger than the last one, I think. Here they are, this is how you pick at them. Oh yeah, come on. 
That's another supper time blowfish right there. I've written about this lots of times in different columns and stories I write about fishing and outdoor adventure. And when I was a little kid, my grandfather and I, his name was Clarence, we catch them in Rehoboth Bay. Now they're almost unheard of in Rehoboth Bay. I ask some of the people down there and they'll say, yeah, you know, once in a while they get a bycatch of them. I'll get him off later, but my grandfather's time, boy, they catch him by the bushel basket full. And anyway, the adults would all rave when we brought blowfish in. I just went out because I like to be with my grandfather fishing. He'd come in so proud with a bushel basket of blowfish and the adults would all be like, oh man, this is so great. We're going to take some fresh clams and tonight we're going to have a feast. And they had this feast and I watched them clean and I did everything. I participated in everything right on up till the part of eating them. I didn't want anything to do with eating those fish. And it wasn't actually till 2021 that I actually went out and caught my first blowfish without my grandfather after like a 50 year layoff and <laughs> then tasted it myself and oh, they are good. Some people consider them a junk fish yet. Hard to believe, but they are really good. Okay, something hit my, something hit my, it was taking drag out on my, I think it's gone now though. Aye, aye, aye. What the heck? Oh, maybe not. Oh, oh, yes. Look at this. We got ourselves a shark. Kayak shark. <laughs> it's a, a dusky dogfish or whatever they're called oh it's a nice one look at that look at that look at that right there that is a bonus i just threw that spare bait i had out and sure enough changed hooks to a larger hook let me see if i can wrangle him in oh, beautiful that's fun i mean you could eat them but you'd have to gut it right away because they put ammonia and stuff into their system. Let's get him in. Uh. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You're gonna get let go, don't worry. Let's just show everybody first. Interesting little like lice or something right here on his, on his dorsal fin. I'm gonna get rid of those for you, pal. But, oh, look, aren't you? He's, he's just gorgeous. Yeah. Sorry, we're not really turned into the sun, but let me get him off the hook. They're far enough for you to see him, really. There. There. Look at that. Look at that beautiful animal. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd give you a kiss, but nobody would see it anyway, so you know, we're gonna we're gonna set you free, okay? We're gonna set you free there, Sharky. Let's make sure everybody can see you first. Okay, let's see. Let's see here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, thank you for being part of my fishing adventure here in Barnegat Bay, Mr. Shark on the kayak. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, so long. Look at that, off he went. Oh, that's awesome. And again, getting my bearings. I am anchored up. I'm anchored up right at the, what they call the B.I. buoy, the Barnegat Inlet buoy. Off in the distance there, you can see the shrouded old Barney, the Barnegat lighthouse that's being worked on right now. And then straight ahead right now, straight where I'm pointing the camera, is the Barnegat Inlet, which can be a very tricky, tricky inlet to run. 
submerged rocks and the jetties and stuff like that. But, you know, it's been nice, really nice. Okay, so we're finished catching the blowfish and people ask these questions a lot. You can find all kinds of videos on YouTube about it, but I thought I'd do like a one-stop shopping thing here. This is the bag I use on the kayak. Very seaworthy bag, same kind of bag we would use if we were out spearfishing, snorkeling or whatever. And um, I attach it to the kayak and that way I keep my fish alive the whole time I'm out there fishing because I can drop them back into the sea. So we're gonna open this up and here you can see the blowfish. And you know, I'm gonna wash them all off. Give them a good rinse. Look at that guy. Woo, yeah. <laughs> and I'll rinse them again as I'm going. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Looks like I kept a dozen. So that's two meals for my wife and I. That's great. So if you are easily upset and get squeamish and don't really want to know where your food comes from or how to prepare it, then you can just fast forward to the end of this <laughs> because I'm going to now clean a blowfish for you and show you what the end result is in case you've never seen it. Okay, friends, we're going to take one of our blowfish that we caught in Barnegat Bay out of Ware Town. And we're gonna go ahead and show those who don't know how, how to clean a blowfish. The way my grandfather used to do it is they used to have a wooden tabletop and they drove two nails into the tabletop about the width of my fingers there. And the nails were in, they were sticking up maybe about two inches. And they would cut the blowfish head right here, turn it this way, turn the fish upside down, put it between those nails and just yank out the, the flesh. That's the way they did it, and they cleaned hundreds of blowfish that way. The most modern technique that I've been using that I saw on the internet, thank you YouTube and all you great innovators, is the fork method, and that's what I'm gonna show you. Basically, the blowfish, you go right behind the head here, you can feel where it stops, and then you cut, okay? And I'm gonna show you this. And the blowfish meat is all right here, and all you do is you just pull it right out of the skin, and that leaves the head and the guts behind. And by the way, I don't even waste the head and guts. Those get put out in my garden, composted in my raised beds, and next year they'll provide fertilizer for tomatoes and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's the blowfish. Most important thing is when you're handling fresh fish is to keep it nice and cold. Like I said, I put my fish in that bag, that catch bag, and then while I'm kayak fishing and I just keep it in the sea and the fish stay alive, and then as soon as I'm done, I take them out and put them in an ice cold cooler and I cool them down until I'm ready to clean them. Other people have live wells or you know handle it however, but the most important thing is bacteria grows quickly. So with handling fish, cleanliness is truly next to godliness in terms of flavor. If you want it to taste divine, keep it clean and keep it fresh and process it as soon as possible and eat it as soon as possible. Okay, let's clean one up. So we're going to do the fork method. To do the fork method, you need a fork, of course. You need a sharp knife, fillet knife I prefer, and you need to have the fish. Okay, set the fork aside for the second. So the blowfish, you take right here. You can feel right here where the head, the, sort of the skull stops and the soft meat begins and you're gonna actually cut right down through that, all the way down through it, right through the spine and the backbone. Okay, right there like that, okay? Now you're gonna take this and you're gonna peel this back just a little bit to expose some of the meat right there. Now you take your fork, put your fork here like this, boom. Some guys use gloves because the skin of the blowfish is a little sandpaper like it's a little shark like but you know my hands are beat up i don't care if they get roughed up a little bit anyway you take the fork and you put it in like that see what we've done i've moved the head here in my hand it's down here like this now we're going to simply pull back on the fish 
doing it nice and slow here for you so you can see and out it comes this what we might call the awful in the butcher industry this is the rest of the fish that'll go out in the garden this is the fillet and there'll be some little cleaning up I'll do I'll take the tail off and I'll show you that and uh, there is a spine in here but some people just clean them up and fry them up just like this uh, my wife actually prefers uh, when I make these if I actually fillet them even further and get out the two little things. And it doesn't seem like there's much left, but when you bread them up, it is a tasty morsel. It is really, really good stuff. Great summertime fare. So that's our blowfish. Let me show you the next part about getting the fins and stuff off. All right, if you want to clean these up a little bit further, take your blowfish. You can certainly cut the tail off of it if you want. Good, get rid of that, no worries. Get rid of the fin right here. Just cut that baby off right there. Good, that's all good. Now, I, I would be content to go ahead and have this fish this way, this beautiful piece of meat but there is a spine in there. So like I said, my wife likes that cleaned off, so this is easy, like you would with any fish, to fillet it. Find the spine, go down along the spine, cut that off of there, do the same thing on the other side. You're really not wasting a lot of it. I don't know, some people get freaked out because there's bones in fish, but then they eat chicken wings. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's the same thing, it's an animal. It has bones, you know, or a steak, a T-bone steak. Guess what it has? It has, it has a bone in there shaped like a T, and, and that's why it's called a T-bone steak, right? But, you know, hey, whatever. If this uh, fish bones for some reason freak you out, just, you know, cut them out. No big deal. And when you do that, let me get rid of some of that. Okay. When you do that, here's what you end up with. Two gorgeous, gorgeous little fillets of meat. And again, for the people that say, oh my God, I'd rather have a flounder or a big chunk of meat or whatever. I mean, hey, to each his own. You know, I learned to do this from my grandfather. Like I said, when I was a kid, I never ate them. But now that I discovered following his footsteps, how good they are and what the adults were all raving about when we bring them in. Boy, you can just serve these up like this with some butter and lemon, or you can put your favorite breading on them and fry them up that way. This is all pure meat, and it is absolutely delicious. They call it chickens of the sea, poor man's lobster. Call it whatever you want to call it. I call it good. Next stop, some food in the pan and on the table and in the mouth. Getting the blowfish fillets ready now for serving, and the first step is to Put it in this batter mixture. What are you using tonight, Kath? Flour, uh -huh. blackened fish seasoning, and, um, and obey. Flour, blackened fish seasoning, and obey. Did you coat it with an egg or anything, or no need no. to do that? No, no need to do that? No. Okay, great. Next, we'll see it get put in the pan. Next step is putting the blowfish fillets that have been coated in the frying pan. These days we use a non-stick pan. In the old days, my grandmother would use a cast iron skillet, and I'll bet there's plenty of people out there that still use that. We've got some Jersey tomatoes to serve up with this, and this, of course, Jersey corn. I love stopping at those roadside stands on my trips from Pennsylvania to the Jersey Shore, getting all this good stuff. And I understand we have some potatoes, too. I'm gonna make up a little sauce to go with this. Everybody can do their own thing. We could have tartar sauce. I like to make a mixture of mayonnaise, Frank's hot sauce, and a little lemon juice. That is a really good sauce, in my opinion. We're letting these go for about two minutes on each side over a high heat, and then turn them over. Let them go some more while the corn's cooking away. So the timing is corn takes about 10 minutes to go. And these things, I don't think we want to have them on the frying pan more than five minutes. But we'll see. As always, it depends on the size of the fillet, the thickness of the fillet and such. And they're looking good. 
Well, those blowfish fillets are browning up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a fresh tomato from the roadside stand. Ooh, man. This is summertime, and this is summertime eating at its finest. I got some fresh basil from our own garden. I think a lot of people who fish also have gardens and like tomatoes and corn. <laughs> okay, that looks awesome. Gonna blend that together. Serve that up. And everybody has their own kinds of sauces they like. Geez, you could have wasabi with this. I like, uh, I like this. A little bit of Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. A little bit of lemon juice. And a little bit of, a little bit of Frank's hot sauce there. Maybe a little more. <laughs> and then, you just take it and mix it all up. So it gets a nice smooth consistency. Sometimes the lemon juice because of the citric acid in it and the lemon, the mayonnaise react and cause, cause a little curdling, but if you just keep stirring, that goes away and you end up with this really smooth sauce. It kind of looks like Russian dressing, but it's not. Some would call it like a roux. It's so good and tasty. And that's what I'm gonna dip my fish in. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So here we go. A feast fit for a fisherman and a fisherman's friend, wife, neighbor, whatever. This is like the greatest thing to be out there fishing and then come home and make this stuff. And yeah, you can find a lot of recipes and a lot of great Facebook pages. This is just the way we make it. You can make it any kind of way. I'm gonna put some butter on that nice baked potato. Here are the blowfish fillets. This is what they look like. Gonna serve that up with some Jersey corn and some beautiful tomatoes and uh, freshly torn up basil. And for me, I know people like different dressings. They like to make their own, but this stuff right here, this Olive Garden light Italian, it's, it's really good. So it's a lighter version of what they serve in the thing. Not that it's a commercial for the Olive Garden, but it's good and I like it. So eat what you like. That's my motto. <laughs> no other comment to that. And uh, salt this up a little bit. And let's see the blowfish. Oh, fresh from Barnegat Bay. In my little sauce here. Oh man. Oh, it's so good. You really, I know many of you know this already, but if you've never had it, it's worth making the effort to try and find some blowfish. Thanks for watching the show. I'm gonna keep eating now. You don't need to see me eat anymore, but. This is a good menu. Oh, by the way, I brought home 12 blowfish, and um, my wife and I will eat six of those in a meal, excuse me. So, the other six we'll have in a night or two, I won't even freeze it. It's so fresh and so tender and good. There you have it. Blowfish, Barnegat Bay, kayak fishing, a great time. Hope you enjoyed this uh, particular episode. I'll do a closing thing here in just a moment. Adventures, and we wound up a wonderful time out on the Barnegat Bay in the kayak. It's a great way to be right down there in the waves. Goodness me, we caught blowfish, we caught sea bass, we caught spot, we caught a shark. That's right, actually caught a shark if you saw the show. You, you just never know what you're going to catch out there in the bay. And when I came in, somebody left this little guy here in my Jeep. So we'll leave you with that. See you next time.